Hi friends, I am Joel John, YouTube blogger and I also create a lot of videos for medical billing related topics and as uh, many of my viewers are from uh, interview candidates for medical billing and the one topic they asked me to be more detailed is AR calling and about the interview questions which they asked and this video will be about denial management uh, and uh, it's just going to be an intro video about denial management and they asked me to have a interview point of view so in, in for interview point of view they may ask you about any denial code but there are some commonly asked denial codes i think i cre already created a video and if you are unable you are not aware of the denial codes don't give blank answers tell them that i am not aware of the code i will land it on the interview process but if they are looking for immediate joiners definitely they won't take you at that point of time because they will be asking the denial codes which they much expect for that process also uh, i will uh, suggest you to go through all the denial codes and if you search it on net itself you have what are the reasons for that and what are how to handle that you can search it on youtube and there are channels which give a uh, denial code specific uh, question and answer and this is going to be a general introduction and how to do it more effectively in a short way i will give it to you so if your company is okay with this process this is the best method to crack any uh, you know denial management task this is going to be a step by step guide and when you talk about ar calling i will also give a little bit of introduction because uh, as i told this is going to be from interview point of view uh, they will ask mainly for the definitions at the first point of time and if they are going to ask for immediate joiners very clearly read the ad for which they are uh, they have a need if they are looking for immediate joiners with the experience they will also specify about the process if they didn't uh, check with the consultant and get details about the process which medical domain is it uh, the specialty hospital it is is it a multi specialty or is it into cardiology or neurology like that because based on that you can have the cpt code knowledge because there are also uh, when you talk about global bundle and uh, incidental and those kinds of things uh, they will also expect you to know about few cpt codes but that that not practically possible i will always suggest you to stick on with the ncca edit excel sheet i will download it and check it from there and i will answer based on that that's uh, answer which is valid as per the medical ethics but i hear that most of them uh, expect people to even know about the uh, global bundle and denied cpt codes on that specialty which are common so if you want that kind of uh, knowledge even i don't have that so uh, i cannot guide you on that check with the people who are already on uh, that particular domain one best source is linkedin check for that particular company associates level if you are going check for associates on linkedin give them a request and uh, join with uh, get in touch with them on linkedin and ask them about what are all the scenarios they get commonly on this kind of uh, denials and what are the cpt codes so that's when you can track that kind of uh, interviews because uh, some of the recent uh, people who get in touch with me said that this is the kind of expectation this is where they are giving me a very good joining bonus like 50k uh, 75k 1 lakh and also a salary hike like 30 to 50% hike and also even higher positions from where you are uh, i really i will be really be happy if you are able to crack that but the expectation of interviewers are being like this so be very careful on when you prepare for these kinds of interview now for generally for a fresher to get into a denial management role or people who are coming up uh, with the lesser expectation they where they have a training in place where they will train you before placement you can follow this and for any company if you follow this method there won't be any problem the errors will be very less if you want and the process will be much successful so i to uh, get into the to i will quickly get into the topic first you have to check whether they have a uh, client's team which already enquires the status of the claim and post the details if else you have to also get the claim status first and how to check the claim status is first there will be a billed amount and uh, date of service with these two only they will be able to retrieve the claim so note this point this is how they retrieve the claim and if you have a claim number already claim number will be given by the insurance company you won't be writing the claim number on the form until it's a 
do uh, if until it's a corrected claim for corrected claims you will be writing the claim numbers on the form on the video about claims uh, claim payment and uh, corrected claims i will post a video on that i will explain that much clearly so the claim number will be given by the insurance company that is uh, mostly you call it as payer in air calling because air calling i will define that as well uh, you are going to call up the insurance company for the uh, patients who use their insurance card for uh, paying their uh, for paying for their medical expenses this is short about ar calling on this what is denial management for when the insurance company has certain set of rules based on the plan type as well as also there are uh, patient uh, insured specific rules as well based on the age and others based on that they will pay only for certain procedures and based on certain conditions which is defined by medical necessity which is given by lcd and ncd codes uh, those things i will cover uh, differently we, i will put a separate video on medical necessity as well uh, like i am going to put it for global denial and bundle cases because these are uh, things which you have to understand in depth if i mix it with this video you won't be able to figure it out so i am not uh, getting deeper into that now so now uh, as i told you if you have the uh, claims team which works for you they will tell you what are all the cpt codes and revenue codes denied okay so you have to check that as well or else if the payment is already done if it's a partly paid uh, you know claim then you have to then you will get the uob uob is called as explanation of benefits or you will get it as era explanation of re uh, remittance uh, advice both are the same you have to check what are all the codes denied and you have to know about allowed amount so i told you about the billed amount billed amount is something which the uh, for any patient they won't uh, put as per the fee schedule this uh, hospital billing what happens is they don't do check for the fee schedule for each uh, patient for each cpt good and bill they will just bill it as per their payment okay so what the insurance company now will do is they have a fee schedule which is a contracted amount with this doctor if this doctor is in network and also they will have a general fee schedule which has upper and lower limits for each cpt codes and some of them will go like uh, medicare plus 25 percentage medicaid uh, uh, fee schedule plus 30 percentage 10 percentage or at least 5 percentage uh, and some of them will go with the same value why they go with the higher percentage these are private players that's they are in us they call it as commercial insurance so what they do is for getting the catch uh, of on the uh, prospects or for selling their insurance products they give some higher amount than the fee schedule of medicare or something so that they easily arrive they, they, there is no need for them to prepare a fee schedule meet every doctor they will just say that this is how my insurance works okay and these are all my networks they can immediately easily add some doctors and they can go ahead with that so now this fee schedule will give the allowed amount understand and also this allowed amount is only based on the approved cpt codes whatever they denied they won't calculate this for the allowed amount you have to be very careful on this words okay so now when they come up with the allowed amount you have to check even if they say that the claim is fully paid you have to probe and ask them are all the line items paid if all the line items are paid where the value goes down so you know now you got the allowed amount and patient responsibility based on the plan the patient will have some copay coinsurance deductibles and all those things i have made a separate video i will give it on the card uh, okay so you can uh, get it from there as well and also on my medical billing playlist you have all the videos so based on that there will be deduction so this from this allowed amount they will deduct that patient responsibility and whatever is left over will be the paid amount so this denied codes and all the others are there right so you have to check whether all the uh, line items are paid based on that whatever is left over you have to calculate the value and they will some for some cases they will say it's globally denied globally bundled incidental for all those case for to with which co patient cpt code which is bundled that details you have to track it down so if everything is done already on the claim status then well and good you get the denial code prepare a frequently asked question prepare the justifications prepare it and keep it ready on your excel you have channels like uh, we billing and erc tamil 
these are the tamil channels but most some of the contents will be in english as well so uh, the mainly the rep conversation they mostly do it on english so everyone can watch those channel they uh, go deep into each and every scenarios i won't be having time for that but i have promised for climb uh, form explanation so i will be deep diving into the climbs and also when it's already there why should i also repeat that okay so you can watch those channels for more information so now what the method or the strategy i suggest and it's being followed in many company successful is have it ready on an excel have the frequently asked questions have the justifications for each denial code okay and uh, if it's for medical necessity alone you have to uh, verify the medical necessity guidelines by medicaid and medicare which is given by lcd and ncd codes uh, you have to check that and uh, those things so they have a web link you can search for that on google given by amca american medical association based on that you have to give the justification and you have to check with them whether they accept that some insurance company will say no no we will accept only our guidelines on those on those cases you can uh, check for an appeal status and now what you have to do is you have to give the justification for that for uh, if they deny a claim get the denial code check for the justification give the justification if they accept the justification they will take it for reprocessing one uh, small example i can uh, give is is take that is denied for not having prior authorization then you have to check for the prior authorization number uh for prior authorization number uh is it there already on the claim form whether they have in checked it sometimes they will say it as inla- invalid prior authorization then you have to check whether the prior authorization form that will also be given on the patient medical records on your software it will be there check for all the documents find out that check whether it's uh, denied if it's denied check on the website insurance website check for the each number sometimes mistyping will be the reason for the denial of prior authorization or for any reason even cpt codes will be mistyped check cross check and find out which is the correct one they will say that invalid cpt code check with the uh, uh, the sources you have I, i forgot the source name i will check and uh, update it on a different video uh, there is one form which uh, the coding team will fill on the initial stage for that with that only you have to cross check your uh, cpt codes if they are different i will uh, check that as well and uh, let you know on my future videos and uh, once this is done all well, the mismatches are checked and when you give the correct one you can ask them to reprocess take it for reprocessing that's called as reprocessing over call some cases they accept some cases again insurance company everything is there depends on that they will say you have to file it as a corrected claim there is a lot of difference between filing a corrected claim and correcting on the existing claim because when you you cannot correct on an existing claim there are cases where in you know, i don't know whether these people misunderstand or those who communicate they think people don't communicate properly i am getting uh, re- on recent days i am getting lot of calls saying that uh, they are pressurizing me to correct on the existing claim form how could i do that can you show it to me on the software these people completely believe that somebody could do that nobody can do that you can only take a request for a corrected claim form that's what i know to do on er calling because mostly claims uh, will be different by handled by a different team most of them will be on us mostly they don't have that process here uh, initial claim form for sure in us okay and when they submit a corrected claim what they do is they will the uh, uh, indicate it by the type number okay if it's going to be ubc ubc form form they will put the in the type of bill the last digit it will be three digit number the last digit will be seven and also on the block 64 they will record the original claim number this is very important even for when you pay the denials will come for corrected claim at that time if you are unable to find the original claim number you have to check on the so if it's ubc form form four form you have to check on the block number 63 if it's cms 1500 form again in block 22 the resubmission code should be mentioned as 7 and also the there will be original reference number that will be the original claim number okay so these kinds of things are there and these kinds of things should be done otherwise this uh, correct corrected claim form will be rejected as if you correct it and send the same claim form some people do that as well if the softwares are not locked properly what this we will do is they download it and edit it and send it back 
that's when you get the rejection called as duplicate claim or duplicate service okay so don't uh, get it again uh, rejected the claim code will be co18 sometimes this happens because the medical hospital itself they submit the form twice <laughs> and uh, some before submitting any form again you must check whether they have received the claim and another one main reason why this co19 co sorry co18 comes is uh, duplicate denial comes is what they do is when they check when you check for the existing claim you fail miss out to check with the date of service mismatch or the uh, build the mode mismatch that kind of uh, mismatch typing also typo errors also will happen so check is there any other uh, claim on that date so like that probe and ask if you don't probe and ask you won't get the details there may be a claim which in which the build amount only one digit will be mismatching or maximum two digits that's how typo error happen sometimes they may type it fully wrong on that cases you have to check whether there are other forms as well and you can even ask them so can you go inside and check the claim form whether what the value of build amount typed or the date of service typed is as same as here and you can also check across them to cross check is there any build amount on a nearby date of service uh, any claim with the same build amount on a nearby date of service these are the checks you have to do to avoid duplicate claims okay it's a denial management uh, faq as i said right these are some of the faq questions so wherein you have, can find out whether the, that original claim would have got paid and again you would have do get a submitted on that that would have got uh, duplicated and software management happens like this you can have, you have to eliminate this claim saying that this really a duplicate so no payment will come here for this claim so those kinds of things are there so you have to be very careful on uh, fi finding out the duplicate claim okay so uh, this misunderstanding let that not happen in future and as i know that both the claim updation process are being done uh, mostly on us mostly they don't have the process here so even when you prepare for uh, interview questions uh, time don't uh, expect much on the software side because mostly they won't ask questions for uh, medical billing from the software side until you go for as a coder or uh, someone who does changes on the software uh, structure uh, most of your questions will be from the manager uh, handling call handling perspective and uh, that's why many people uh, confuse when they say it as filing character claim people also confuse they think that in this process they are going to asking to correct the same claim so avoid those kinds of confusion prepare well wish you all a uh, lot of success in this uh, thing and uh, denial management that doesn't uh, only end up when the money is once the amount is tallied if they are not accepting for re reprocessing you have to ask for the time timely filing uh, a turn around time for reprocessing and you have to document that and if the repro you have to check in after 3 days or something or even after the same on the very next business day you have to check whether the reprocessing is done many callers in uh, insurance industry they will say, say that i am now taken it for reprocessing but they won't update it on the system some some, some sometimes system error would be a hindrance or sometimes they will miss out update you would be thinking it has taken for uh, uh reprocessing that's where you miss out the tfl timely filing limit it's very important criteria before you take the denial claim itself you have to cross check the tfl if it's already claim uh, uh, process is done or ebo is done very first thing you have to check is timely filing limit make sure that you uh, recall and check and may even if you send a corrected claim after a week call and check whether the client corrected claim is received based on the timing limit have the time slot and then another one thing is payer id fax number address these are the thing you have to recheck every time before you submit the claim okay and also in case if the timely filing limit is over you have to check for the appeal limit and do that as well okay okay friends i have taken a lot of time from you and uh, this is short about denial management and uh, uh, regarding claims i will put a separate video watch that as well uh, watch all the videos in my medical billing playlist that will be much helpful for you and some topics like uh, prior authorization and uh, common uh, topics i may be creating it on tamil but it will be a ditto of some of the or a version of the english videos which i create already because a lot of people are asking me create videos on tamil and uh, i'll be explaining the ub0 form and uh, cms150 claim form uh, each and every blocks i will be explaining and i am planning to do it as a uh, zoom video wherein i will be showing you the claim form itself on screen so wait for that as well 
and uh, maybe from next week i'll be starting that process uh, so within one month or something you will get those videos as well and uh, uh, wish you much successful on that uh, plan simple if you have to buy a try to buy a as much as that and uh, for as far as interview promises are concerned don't promise for ncc nc uh, nssi edit sheet i know it by heart i know all the cpt codes don't promise and uh, without working without uh, manual i don't suggest because if you get a different denial code what you will do <laughs> so i will always recommend to have a soft copy but there are people who are challengeable they say that i want more joining bonus there are people even whom when they when they call up me and ask oh, bro you know have you have any job offer which gave about 50k uh, as bonus 1 lakh as bonus uh, someone will can will someone give me more than 40% hike in cdg 50% hike in the salary those kinds of thing definitely they look for competitive people but still ask them after getting into the role can i look have a excel document or something the reason is this joining bonus mostly comes with a cap you have to work for 6 months you have to work for 3 months or you have to work for a year after that only they will release the joining bonus to your bank account so have all those in mind then accept the offer and also then uh, check whether you can be survey or that kind of uh, you know challengeable environment because most of the cases the if you know the project very well sometimes you may manage but i uh, that always won't help okay okay friends uh, it's uh, thank you very much for listening to me still this time it's your joel janjay signing off from you bye